Okay, so uh, moving on to uh, structures and uh, compression in general. The main thing that we were looking at for compression uh, was uh, we found that uh, colors were being sent back and forth between the server and the uh, clients every update for the lobby, for the scoreboard, and for the player. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we found out that those vectors that are sent, which are the colors, each one has a float, which is a float 35 bits. Each vector itself is 96 bits, resulting with 192 unuseless bits being sent per player, per packet. And that there, you know, uh, as, as more players join, that's multiplied out because every uh, client is sending their own personal uh, value to the server and the server is updating it. So it, it, we th we see we we saw this as a major f fault. So we removed the read and the write of the color uh, from uh, these functions. So it's not coming from the, the sh uh, stream for both the lobby manager and for the uh, for the score. Now we left it for the player because we do still actually want co color to be set. So what we did instead was inside a Robocat client. Uh, which I'll open up now. <clears throat> Inside Robocat client, uh, when the uh, color is being set, set color. When the color is being set on a change of the of the actual person, then we say, oh hey, lobby manager for that player uh, and lobby manager for that scoreboard, you know, set the same color, because it, otherwise it's it's not really worth doing it because uh, it's just a waste of bits. Uh, our limit per packet is. 1,500, so you can really see how, uh, 1,500 bytes, so you can really see how uh, the the, co the colors on their own were taking up a, a pretty considerable big chunk of, of that usable space. Yes, yeah, so yeah, even with that adjustment, uh, a packet limit only exceeds with more than nine players. Now, yeah. With this adjustment. Yeah, so uh, we've been able to get the game to run up to nine players with this. So uh, just talking about synchronization, uh, uh, things that are in sync in the game, uh, the lobby ready state. Um, well, also the player's position, uh, the shooting, the rotation of the player as well, and uh, pick up and drop off of the bags, the health. Yeah. So th those collision uh, events with the pick up and the drop off, they're working. The health spawn. Yeah, yeah. The health spawn dropping. Yeah. The health spawns and the duffel bag spawns. They're all in sync as well. Yeah, and the time loops. The time is in sync. Now, uh, the way I'm measuring, you know, one second, it mightn't be exactly one second, but because it's being calculated on the server, uh, it is being sent out to all the clients. So all the clients are still in sync with whatever the server says is one second of a tick on our timers. Um, um, yeah, so we'll just go and have a look at some of this. Um, do we need to talk, um, show, uh, show off some of our... Or well, we'll, 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 you'll see the synchronization when we play the demo in a minute. Um, so uh, moving on to persistence. Uh, inside server, uh, I am loading, um, I'll go into the page file, just easier to jump around. Uh, I've got three functions here, load high score, update high scores, uh, sorry, four, uh, update high score of a particular player, and then save high scores. So if we jump to any of these here, uh, you will be able to see what is happening. So there's on the server, there's a scores.txt file. It reads it in, and it's basically using CSV file formatting. Uh, each line, uh, everything is, is delimited by commas on each line. So I'm getting those, and I'm, I'm creating a, 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 a vector of, uh, I have a vector of, um, uh, where's there? Yeah, high scores. This is a vector of, of a struct called high score, and the struct just has the player name and the score. I was using the player's ID, uh, but that changes each update. So I attempted to use the IP address, but I, I, I wasn't able to access the IP address from the um, from the server. I, I was attempting to uh, to get the IP address from the client proxy, and um, I, I was kept kept getting errors saying I, I wasn't allowed to access the IP address. So I went back to just the name and the score system. Uh, which kind of works. It works well. So that loads in th those scores on the load. Uh, every time a player uh, joins the game, it then checks to see that there's a bit of shrapnel from the 
get IP address. Uh, it then checks to see if um, get high score if that player uh, is in that list, and if it is, it'll return that score and set their starting score to that. So it's not really a high score; it's more like a bank. It's it's loading in your previous score uh, to to continue playing. The goal is to constantly increase your bank balance. So that's the load. Uh, there's also then update high scores, which will loop through uh, all of the current scores in the scoreboard manager and update the high score. If there's no entry in the in the scores.txt file for that player, a new entry is added. So that's pretty much how persistence works in our game. Jumping into um, the gameplay, we'll, we'll actually run the game now. So we'll just run the server. Um, yeah, sounds good. Um, we'll probably open about three, four. four. Yeah, we'll, we'll open four clients. Four so clients this will be machine. P1, or we'll just call it uh, player one. Perfect. <clears throat> so there's player one, so you can and have you a look at lobby here. Yeah, you can you're immediately join into um, Cormix lobby, lobby system. And um, the hood is drawn above it, so you, as we shown earlier, the hood. Um, so what you might have noticed there is when there was only one person joined, the message, the lobby message said, uh, uh, clicks, uh, it said, um, wait for player two. The game can't start with only one player, and that was a deliberate design. So we'll just load in uh, two more. We'll just we'll just get, sure, actually three. We'll, we'll keep it at three. Uh, actually, no, we can get it running before. So we'll get it running before on the screen. So each of these are connecting to the server at the IP address and the port that's opened. And as you can see here, uh, as each player uh, joins each other instance, is immediately updated. The persistence is immediately updated. Uh, each player spawns at a different location depending on their player ID on the on the map. The map, as you see there, is drawn by uh, Paddy's tile map system. And uh, yeah, that that's a function that's set up in the server. That's a PP file. Yeah. So as you can see, when you hit space, uh, it will ready up your player, and it'll immediately tell on all the other systems uh, who's ready and who's not. When you are ready. It will actually change the click space to ready up message to waiting on however many is left. So we'll just wait on all these. And then when they're all match begins, and as you can see, the timer's counting down. So once the match begins, so there's a bit of latency there, but that's actually that's actually lag coming from this laptop. It's running a server and four instances, so we might chop it down. So we now have 120 seconds to run around and find some duffel bags. There's one here, I'm just playing with this character. When you pick one up... Uh, yeah, so once you have it picked up, you notice in the top right corner, you get the money displayed on your screen, and now it's up to you to drop the money off at one of the designated locations, which there's five of them within the map, all within the parking lot on the outskirts at the bottom right, the bottom left, and up to the top left. So once you drop it off, you can see that he no longer has the money in the top, bottom left, and his um, his score has increased by 500. Yeah, so you can see here there's a leaderboard, uh, which constantly shows the top three players. Uh, so player four is after killing somebody, which gives them one dollar, and they're after also, I'm going to just grab another bag here for this yeah, player, player right. three, and run in through. There we go. So player three is now in second place with 500, just a little bit behind. So the timer's still counting down, 55 seconds left. Uh, shooting will, uh, as you can see there, when you shoot somebody, their health actually drops. So, yeah. So, uh, you, so I think I wasn't actually close enough there. Yeah. So you can see the health on the bottom right. There so, it decreases. So over here you can see this is the health bar, and uh, this bar here will also start decreasing when there's only ten seconds left. Yeah. So each player can take ten hits before they die. And so here we go. We'll kill them now. There when go. a person, when a player dies and he's carrying money, the player will lose the money before he drops it off which is the goal, so you, you want to avoid other players dropping off their money. Um, so we have 16 seconds left here, and we're just going to play as player one. And player one's going to really try really hard to, to get in first place. So player one, or sorry, is player two, is after getting a bag, and now it's after getting another bag, and it's going to try and drop it off and get a thousand. There we go. So player two is on a thousand, and now we get our win state. Which player two wins, and it displays the amount they have and we get a bit of a break point there. So we do have uh, a couple of bugs. We'll mention them in a minute. But that there is basically uh, the game loop. Yeah, and that's the win state that's being called in the lobby manager once the game finishes.
from the updates in the do frame in the server. So uh, yeah, that's four instances running. I believe we can run. Yeah. So that breakpoint issue. Um, actually, what was happening was this part here in handle lost client. Uh, there's some shrapnel code from when I was trying to get the IP addresses from the uh, for the scores, and what's happening is the client proxy is has left, and then I'm trying to get the player ID of the client proxy. So that's a that's a problem. So all that needs to happen here is this needs to be removed, and that actually fixes that bug. Um, the the other bug that we were having when we were testing on machines was on multiple machines was some HUD elements would start vanishing uh, and we, we couldn't really figure out what, what was causing that. Uh, it could have been something to do with uh, this here the, with, the, with the client proxies. Uh, we're not entirely sure. Um, what might have happened is uh, the client proxies might have been removed from this list uh, when they weren't actually not, not disconnected, if that makes sense. Um, so this is something that we couldn't see yesterday when we were demoing it, testing our game, and um, at home, and when we were running the game on our own machines, we couldn't replicate this. So mm. this is something that. Yeah, it was unfortunate, but but it's yeah. good good to find it now. Uh, so just just kind of wrap up. Uh, we'll we'll do a bit of, of where the work balance was, and then what we'd have liked if we had more time. So in regards to work balance, so I think it was very very evenly split this time around. Uh, we we worked kind of hard to make sure that nobody was doing more than another person. Um, uh, so I worked on the lobby system, the persistent scores, game loop, and the high score display. Um, I worked on the tile map, the health pickup, the duffel bag, the pickup and the drop off of the duffel bag, uh, the instructions, and the win state. Yeah, and that also included uh, the like the, the shooting and the, the the health, so like um, the players like respawning and stuff. A little bit of hood elements as well. Like the health bars and stuff that have needed some adjustments. Yeah, the the UI in the hood, uh, the 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 bomb timers and the uh, the health bars as well. That was all Paddy. Uh, he he worked he worked through uh, a lot of weird code to try, trying to get that stuff working. So uh, we also used just to mention we use GitHub for our version control, and we'll be submitting a link to our GitHub as well. Um, just as final thoughts, uh, <clears throat> I think it turned out. Pretty well. There was a couple of things though we would have liked to have been able to add with a bit more time. Yes. Yeah, so an idea for this is I was trying to add the collision. The, it was box collision I was trying to implement instead of the radius collision that's already in this engine. And um, as I was building it, I couldn't get the velocity to go the opposite way when you hit it. I just kept the character kept slowly bleeding through the um, barrier, which caused a big jitter and problems. So I yeah. couldn't get that working. Yeah. With a couple more days, we would have probably been able to get collision working, but yeah. just due to time constraints, unfortunately. Uh, the other thing we would really liked would have been if we could have gotten the map system to work on the server, so we could have multiple maps, um, uh, where the server basically tells the client which which maps to spawn. Uh, the other thing, uh, the one final thing, which I think is the most important one that we would have really liked would have been to come up with some clever system that if a packet size was more than 1500 instead of just dying instantly it would send you know the most the the most valid packet uh, bits that it had and the rest of it would be sent in a in a in a second package uh, in a second packet but uh, we didn't get around to doing that uh, overall i think we're fairly happy very yeah uh, with how, how, how it worked. And, uh, definitely happier with the, than rather than the, the last two sides. Yeah, we can definitely see the major benefits that UDP has over TCP um, after working with this. It's a lot smoother. Um, the kind of game logic stuff that failed us on our on our last CA and didn't work properly, we were able to get working here, like persistence and synchronization, uh, synchronization I think worked out much better. Yeah. So, okay, thanks uh, for listening. Um, that's it. Yep. Thank you.